Hi, uh, this is a defrost timer from a Whirlpool refrigerator. The refrigerator is um, about five years old. We started having problems where the refrigerator was not defrosting. A considerable amount of frost and ice built up on the back panel that you could see at the back of the freezer box. Uh, we called a service firm. Uh, they cleared the ice checked the refrigerator, checked the defrost heating coil, said everything was okay, and on they went. Well, it wasn't the end of the problem. The refrigerator wasn't defrosting. So I looked into this, and I thought I'd let everyone out there know that the problem that I had with the refrigerator was really um, due to a fault in this timer. Um, these are found in any refrigerator that automatically defrosts. If you do not have an automatically defrosting refrigerator, this isn't necessary because the refrigerator already has a main thermostat that governs being on or off for cooling. This device simply um, takes the refrigerator out of cooling and puts it into a defrost mode where, like I said earlier, you have a heating coil in the freezer that will heat up the evaporator coil coils and melt the, the ice and the frost off them and that's necessary to do. This is a 8 hour and 30 minute timer. That's what's written on there as I think I have that in focus and that tells me that this refrigerator would defrost about three times a day um, and maybe that's necessary. If you need to check a defrost um, situation on a refrigerator it's pretty easy to do that wherever one of these is installed uh, hopefully there will be an exposed area where you will see this turning screw right here and in taking a screwdriver you can literally um, in clockwise turn this thing until it puts the refrigerator into defrost and that's what I'm doing here it may take almost a complete turn depending on where the timer is at that moment uh, here, you will hear a click, and that's where the defrost cycle begins. Actually, this there's a notch up here, and it lines up with this line, and I think maybe that's why that's there. Well, defrost takes place for t about 20 minutes, and after 20 minutes, the refrigerator, this will click again, and it will go back into cooling mode. The other part of this device that we can talk about is this is um, obviously the connection point to wiring which is just nothing more than a um, a wiring bracket or push on clip um, one of these terminals would be a common the other would be a power or what we call the plus side and the other two terminals one would be for cooling the refrigerator and the other is the defrost terminal that sends power to the defrost coil Anyway, like I said, this is mounted somewhere in your refrigerator. They come in different shapes and sizes, I'm sure. Uh, this one happened to be at waist height, uh, just underneath the freezer box uh, in the area where the lights and controls were. Pretty easy to take out, except I did have to break a couple of clips to get it off the mounting studs. Um, not very slick, considering that um, it wouldn't be, would be easier if it was screwed on, but it isn't. This part of the device here is, is actually the timer, kind of like a light timer. It's more like a clock. It would, um, I, as I said, it's, a, it's an eight-hour cycle that, that runs this thing. Um, I actually took this apart, and to show you what it looks like inside, I took it apart you know, for that purpose as well, and, and doing it now. This is the actual gear that turns the mechanism that I'm going to show here uh, from the timer end of it. Um, and here's the guts. Uh, in here is, of course, the wheel that rotates that allows these contact arms to activate the different, the two different cycles, one being the cooling and one being the defrost. I don't know which of these lugs is the, the defrost. It's not that important at the moment. But if you can see on the back side of this wheel, there's a kind of an arch here um, and a notch. That's that's the detent where this thing operates, and in this case, since we have it open, the, the rotation 
is, is counterclockwise, whereas on the outside it would be clockwise. But in turning this counterclockwise, um, you get to the point where, um, like I said, that click is where it goes into defrost. It actually activates these contact points up here that actually don't really fit too well. They don't look like they're squared on. Uh, one is and the other isn't. I don't know whether that had anything to do with the filling of this thing. But the point that I wanted to make is that after that goes back into the cooling mode right there with that click, it then rotates into a, a long cycle, you know, for about seven and some seven hours and some minutes. And as it gets along there, it's pushing these contact arms, um, contacts further away uh, under tension. And by them pressing on this wheel, uh, the wheel gets a little bit stiffer to turn. It, it just becomes tougher to rotate. Uh, there's the defrost. There's the cooling again. And then the cycle begins again. Well, as you notice, as I turn this wheel, those arms are, are being pushed back. And as that happens, this wheel becomes tougher to turn by a, a small amount. But I think this clock got weak. This timer got weak, and it wasn't pushing beyond this point. In other words, when I tested this manually in the refrigerator, the defrost cycle worked fine, and the cooling came back on. But once it got to this point in the travel, it stalled, and it just wouldn't go anywhere. So the refrigerator was not defrosting, and the fault was where we're at right now with this. It just, it just the clock and the timer stalled at this point and was not working. It just wouldn't move. Um, if you can see, there's a detent in there, right there. And, and that's where this trip happens. And then back to cooling. So beginning right about here, it's real easy to turn this. But when it pushes these levers aback, as I said, it, it, this particular thing, this, this, this timer got too weak and it wasn't working. I've replaced this and now it's fine. Um, and, and, and that's the point of this instruction to show you how these things work and why this was faulty. Uh, otherwise, by just examination on the outside and by running the thing with this manual situation it appeared to be okay but it wasn't. I hope that helps.